Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. Uh, we've already looked at the last two Ace Combat games, or should I say the first two Ace Combat games. So it seems only right that we take a look at the last Ace Combat game on the original PlayStation. That is Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere, which actually, funny enough, is a game that I never really played much of as a kid, from what I can remember. I was having a good, long, hard think about this the other day. And I can... I know I played the demo a hell of a lot. And I have a feeling that I'd already kind of transitioned over to PC at that point. So I wasn't super into my uh, PlayStation at that particular time. But I did play the demo and it was stunning. Now, the thing with uh, Electrosphere is it was actually set in the future. And my God, did this game get a humongous graphical upgrade over the two predecessors. This game actually looked pretty bloody stunning, if I'm honest. Uh, they took a lot of liberties with it as well, being set in the future. Uh, now, I didn't realize this until I started doing a little bit of research for this video. And the European and American version was actually different from the Japanese version. So uh, I got a bit of blurb up here. And that's something that not for a while, but we're definitely going to have to have a look at. So Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere is a is a combat simulation video game developed by Namco for the PlayStation. It's the third installment of the Ace Combat franchise and the only one that has two different versions. This is really interesting. The original Japanese version and the international... Uh, was it the international version? Yeah. The game is set in a futuristic world where multinational corporations have replaced national governments and a war breaks out between two of them. Nurocom incorporated and general resource limited the player can choose to side with one of them that's interesting i kind of like that okay um can choose to side with one of them or with the peacekeeping organization called upeo or with a terrorist group called ouroboros ouroboros chris uh, that's interesting. So there's four factions. The game features 52 missions. Uh, that's a lot, considering the first game had 17 missions. And I believe the second game had... Oh, God. It was a few more, but not many. Um, 52 missions with branch, branching paths and multiple endings, as well as 23 different aircraft and, and spacecraft. Ooh, it's interesting. Okay, so the Japanese version had a complex uh, and developed story with voice acting in cutscenes, but for the international version, had most of the story content cut due to translation costs, which is interesting. And apparently a lot of the um, cutscenes were also cut. So, <laughs> I didn't know that as a kid, obviously. Um, Definitely wouldn't mind to actually investigate some of that a little bit deeper. Um, now, interestingly enough, I think it was last year or possibly the, a year before, there's now been a complete fan conversion of this game, which you can actually run on a emulator. Um, the Japanese version completely English translated, which is curious. Uh, I need to do a little bit of deep diving, so don't know if we get to it. You know, this year or whatever, because I've got a bit of a schedule that I need to keep to at the moment. But we're certainly going to be looking at that. The game also has a hidden mode called Free Flight, which allows players to fly around the, any mission map without any enemies or objectives. To access it, the player has to enter a code on the title screen. Very, very interesting. The game also has several references to other Namco games, such as Ridge Racer, uh, Tekken, Soul Calibur, for example. One of the aircraft in the game is called the R101 Delphinus. Oh, okay. Which is a reference to Ridge Racer Type 4's um, R401 Pac-Man car. Ridge Racer, that's, a, you know, I was never, like, huge into Ridge Racer. I think I had the original, like, when the PlayStation first came out. But, yeah, that's about it. Um, I did play a bootlegged version of Ridge Racer Type 4, and that was really, really good. Um, maybe we'll fire that up for a Titan Tries at some point. 
Um, the game's soundtrack was composed by four different composers, each with their own style and genre. Okay. Soundtrack was praised by critics and fans for its diversity and quality. Very interesting stuff. So like I said, back in the day, there's a very, very nice looking uh, disc and of course an advert for the Dual Shock there as well. Um, yeah, so back in the day, I only had the demo and I did play the absolute shite out of it. Uh, probably one of my most played demos ever. But on the back, it says, in the future, closer than you could imagine, two enterprises control the balance of power. As the military and technology take opposing sides, your role as a pilot of, of a peace enforcement organization is to subdue the conflict. Engage the enemy in dogfights, ground attacks, high altitude takeouts, canyon chases, and time-restricted missions. Uh-oh, we don't like those. You must choose a side. Make sure it's the right one. Uh, combining tactical, strategic, and combat skills to create the best mission-based fight simulation on PlayStation. Electrosphere is a sophisticated and thrilling addition to the awesome... Don't, don't suck yourself off, like, but, you know... Awesome Ace Combat series. And, you know, they're not wrong. It is an awesome series. Uh, one that's very near and dear to me. So, without any further waffling, uh, let's take a little peek at the actual game, shall we? One second, I shall switch over. We're going to be emulating it because it's just easier, to be honest. And if I emulate it, I can use my Elite Controller, which... A little bit better than those old beaten up old uh, <laughs> dual shocks. Okay, so those of you with a keen eye will have uh, noticed that we're playing the American version. So we get the 60 uh, frames per second, which of course power games were limited to 50 only, which, you know, we didn't notice as a kid, but these days, sad face. Let's see if there's any kind of intro or anything. Oh man, I like it. I'm guessing these are all cinematics that we never got. <laughs> Oh, I like the music. All right. Okay. Uh, certainly, uh, we've come a long way from air combat, haven't we? All right. Well, let's uh, fire up a new game. Oh, hang on. Ah, reopen. So there's no options, question mark? Let's have a little look, shall we? Ah, here's the meat and potatoes. Right, let's go for options. Uh, controller, I guess. Yeah, okay. So we've got control easy or normal, I suppose, instead of novice and expert. I'm guessing uh, normal is what we want. Response, neutral zones, and all that good stuff. We're not going to fuck with any of that. But we are going to go to game. Ah, that this is just settings. I see. All right. Uh, mission says so no, like, cutscene or... Uh, okay. Uh, ooh. Ooh. All right. Neural Air Force is transporting military supplies over the no-fly zone above blah blah blah. Wow, is this not read out to us? 
So, this is a mission title, Transports. Alright. It's a basic sort of like transport mission. Looks like we've got drones and things to contend with now. Excellent. And we have essentially a futuristic typhoon. Typhoon 2. How curious. I remember this from the demo, actually. Uh, it felt really interesting to be flying the, uh, the EF-2000E Typhoon 2. Of course, there isn't going to be a Typhoon 2. <laughs> Typhoons are being retired in 2035, and they're going to be replaced by the UK's sixth generation fighter, Tempest, which is just uh, on the drawing boards right now. So, all right, let's go. So we can select the Vulcan cannons and standard missiles. All right, let's go. Let's get a few missions of this one done. Do we have to read this? Neural Inc. and General Resources are bitter rivals in the competition for econom uh, economic dominance of the world. A defection of key scientists from General Resource to Neural Work. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> read this if you wish, guys. It looks like it's moving at a bit of a sprightly speed. So, yeah. All right. So, into the combat. Ah, so D-pad actually gives us a little bit of a look around look at the graphics guys i'm not even taking the piss this looks so nice for a playstation one game ah oh, look look at the gun there's actually like drop physics and stuff on the gun i like it way more animations on the airframe as well which is always wonderful to see all right so we've got an r101 Ooh, look at the missiles They've completely changed the effect for the missiles, and I'm down for it. So music is definitely different. Can we still pull up our map? We can. All right. And we've got ah, oh, we've got the enemy cam as well, which they added to later games. So you hold down the what would be the triangle button, and you can actually track your target wherever you are, which is a really uh, really nice little feature there. Also, missiles have a larger lock-on range, which is nice. Alright. Alright, let's go splash more targets. Ah, oh, look at that. This is a very kind of futuristic... Ooh, futuristic heads-up display. Oh, man. What a bloody difference. Alright, let's go for the R501s. Let's see if we can splash these guys down. Love how animated the HUD is as well. It's uh, quite a step up. Can we just again take a minute to appreciate this Typhoon 2 model? Looks sick. Oh, we splashed him. Now, one thing I want to try if we fire the missiles, can we go into like a missile chase cam that they added? Let's try on this R201 over here. Come on, you slimy son of a bitch. All right, it's a drone. Let's hit the old air brake, see if we can breeze in behind him. Come on, baby. There we go. Nope. So we still don't have any kind of like missile track cam, but that's fine. That would have been pretty extreme for a PlayStation game. Wow, he is moving slowly. Got a mission timer tracking along behind at the bottom there. So, I wonder how, to be honest, how we would do a LP of this with so many missions and factions. I don't think, ooh, I don't think, that's fine, we're going to stall. We want this guy to blow past us, if he actually will. Come on, he is moving slowly, literally level pegging with us. Alright, there's some physics going on with this uh, handling as well. It's a lot heavier, a lot less arcadey. Uh, I like it. Maybe there is some simulation physics going on here. Come on, splash that drone. Oh, the missiles actually did a little bit more to track there, which is also curious. Okay. Yep, we can see the rudder effect going on on the plane as well. The flaps are moving as we're swinging this thing around, which 
Again, I'd really like to see. We only have like 59 missiles left. Is that a cause for concern? Oh, Jesus. So what are these things? Because they don't appear to be attacking us. They're some kind of decoys? Who knows? Come on. Yeah, they're really difficult to actually get behind because they are so slow. Nice. So we're going to have to actually like switch up tactics here. You can't just play other Ace Combat games and jump into this one without, uh, you know, rethinking some strategies. But that's okay. We like this. It's always nice when there's more learning going on. There's a nice bit of heat haze coming off the afterburners there as well. I like it. I mean, it's obviously quite a low resolution game. Whoa, Jesus. But you can see how they started to push that little PlayStation. I mean, the draw distances as well and the detail uptick just on the, uh, just on the ground there is just insane how much uh, they improved that. And I think that was fun as well. Like, you know, back with the um, you know, earlier consoles, when developers really started to put a bit of budget behind their games and started to push the hardware a lot more, um, the, the uptick in the visual fidelity was really impressive at times. So can we? I guess we just can't reach out and touch this guy. Oh, there we go. Right, so the gun's range is actually a little bit further than the than the uh, game actually leaves you to believe. All right, well we don't need to see a replay. So we got some decent kills. We got oh we get performance rating of D because we gave the enemy the D. Yes, that's exactly what we did. Let's do another mission. All right, new networks. Uh, what's that? Wallapolo Mount. Okay, well, that's gone. Scattered throughout the mountains. Looks like we're hitting radar sites this time. Okay. So I don't know how the performance is done. Are we just? Do we get performance on? just essentially uh, how quick we get through the mission or is it like you know how quick we are how accurate we are I don't know throws us straight into the mix all right let's go kick some ass oh the music which just gets you pumped like straight away Ooh, that sneaky little sausage come back to daddy yeah, Eurofighter 2, eh? I like it. I don't know uh, when this game is set, like how far into the future it is. Whether there's somewhere that uh, actually mentions that, I don't know. But also, being slightly futuristic, I get to take a lot of liberties with the airframes. I get to come up with some really interesting ideas. Because it's not quite as grounded in reality as some of the other games with the strange reel kind of theme that they were going for. So radar sight. Let's hit the deck. Oh god, look, there's some physics there. There really is. Kind of skimming. That's interesting. So this thing actually has some weight to it. It actually starts dropping heavy to the ground. You can't just hit the stick back and start instantly traveling up. You actually have a bit of momentum with it. This is very impressive. Now, remember the demo level? You were uh, engaging. I think you was in a bay somewhere, from what I remember, and there was some ship combat, I think, and a few other different things. I like the air velocity indicator there as well. You see the wind rushing fast. Not quite contrails, but um, yeah, then maybe. Right, let's knock these radars out. Obviously, the Typhoon was uh, a multi-role fighter, or is. It didn't start life that way. It started as an air superiority fighter, but then was retrofitted into a kind of multi-role kind of um, airframe. Ooh, 
missile defense nested nicely in that mountain there. Must have been asleep at the wheel, but we're happy with that. I like it. I like how it controls. Oh, 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 oh. oh we skimmed. Oh, we skimmed. That was quite cinematic there with those rounds being rattled off into the back of our heads. Come on, baby. Let's get that loop. Tuck that ground and dust this bastard. Alright, got you fucking padlock, son. I don't like the angle. We're not going to be able to pull up, are we? Ooh, fuck me. No, we're good. We're good. Nah, what are you worried about? We're fine. Everything's good. This is why we get paid the big bucks. Nah, I don't like that angle. See, if this was the uh, one of the other two games, you could just point your nose down, let loose a pair of missiles, pull back up. Robert's your father's brother, but <laughs> we've got a little bit of gravity to fight here. And man, it feels nice. I'm wondering if the levels are going to be longer. Probably. Let's go for these bastards up in the sky here. See if we can't... Nah, it's never going to... Ooh, I was going to say, never going to hit. No way, but it did. Waste his ass. So we've got actual proper... Yeah, you get little contrails coming off those guys. Which is a really nice effect. Game runs nice and smooth as well. But then... Yeah, we're emulated, so... You know. Take that with a grain of salt, I guess. Some of the uh, ones on the 360, and I believe the one on the... Original X... Uh, not original Xbox. The Xbox... One, they didn't run brilliantly. There's definitely some frames drops in some of the bigger combat scenarios, but you know, frame rates weren't exactly uh, that much of a talks about thing during last generation. I think frame rates are one of those things, really. Uh, of course, we all want 60 FPS. 60 FPS should be the gold standard. I do agree with that. Um, and higher if possible. But, uh, of course, you know, if you buy a console, there's only so much that they can do with that. Do you remember the PlayStation 5? Uh, Sony promised 8K gaming with the PlayStation 5. 8K, really? The box struggles with, uh, you know, 1440p. <laughs> Plenty of games are actually 1080p on the PlayStation and Series X. Uh, yeah, I think 8K is a little bit of a pipe dream. And as for the 120 FPS, uh, yeah, I, I'll don't hold your breath. I know there are some games that run as close to 120 FPS as they can, but. They didn't really ever get there. All right. Yeah, I, th I believe like Gears 5 has a 120 FPS mode. And on the Series S, I think it drops down to like 720p. Uh, don't think it's worth it. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, maybe that's just my thoughts. But uh, yeah. You know, 720p was, was, you know, pretty pretty groundbreaking back in 2006. That was nearly 20 years ago. Give me 1080p 60, and I'll, I'll, I'll be happy with that. Okay. We gave the enemy the D again. All right. We're still not getting, like, any story or anything, really, are we? Based on the success of the previous mission, General Resource Defense Force has agreed. Okay. Ah. Uh, an Eagle Plus. So we're beginning our training, apparently. Kind of difficult to keep up with um, what the game wants us to do. All right. Right, follow my lead at a radius of no more than 1,000 feet. Yeah, we're supposed to be pursuing this guy. So we need to keep within about 1,000 feet of this guy. Got ya. Well, we've already blown that, haven't we? 
Alright, we're pursuing him. Come on, brother. What have you got for us? Alright, he's got some nifty turns. I really want to see what some of these aircraft are like. I'm very curious. So we've got an Eagle Plus, we've got a Typhoon 2. What else do we have here? So I guess this is how we join the Peacekeepers. In which case... Hmm, I'm curious how the branching story works. Is it to do with uh, what missions we fail? Do we eventually get a choice of missions? Hmm. I don't know if we're going to discover that here. But, we'll see. Bit of an interesting uh, glitch there. Dropped a few frames. Alright, he's getting away from us. Let's hit the burners. Claw back some of that distance. Okay, he's turning to a bit of a tight, squeaky tight fight. Not really a fan of missions like this. Use the machine gun for airborne targets and missiles for ground targets. You got it, boss. So I guess we've managed to keep him happy. Alright, let's push those engines and get into the combat. Right, they are maneuvering. I think they're maneuvering. I don't know. We've just blown past all of them. Nah, we're not gonna stall. Okay, we're stalling. <laughs> Let's not die during an exercise. That would be embarrassing. Okay, very difficult to actually keep your your aircraft going slow in this game, which is uh, a curious. Odyssey, but that's okay. It's just something we'd get used to, I'm sure. Right, scratch those two. No um, ammo limits, by the look of it, for the Vulcan cannon. Uh, I thought after two, or after the first game, they actually scrapped gun ammo limits, but that's not true. They did bring them back later on in the series, to varying degrees. Right, so let's scratch these towers. Go for some missile kills. Oh, I wonder if there's like a futuristic A-10. That'd be pretty badass. Let's dust this guy. Oh, God. It really does kind of get sucked into the ground there. Dusted. One last ground target. Let's go see what our buddy gives us after this one. Kind of hoping the training mission's over then. <laughs> you know, you would have thought if there's a training mission, that would have been uh, earlier on. But whatever. Dusted. Okay. What is that? No air transports are flying through airspace above Wallapolo. Woodlands without authorization. The transports are dispersing chemical agents as part of an illegal experiment. Destroy all containers dropped by the transports to stop the experiment. Uh, okay. Alright. Cool. So, missions change. They always do, as Chief would tell us. Right, let's scratch some of these guys. Now, we are approaching half an hour, which I do want to try and keep these tries to. But, you know, hour maximum. Let's get rid of him. These guys aren't being super aggressive. Wow, this guy's a clip away. Let's hit the burners, close in. And give this guy a good old punch in the nose punch up the arse, actually. Oh, this is the bomber. Alright. Oh, I say the bomber. It's the thing that was dropping those containers of chemicals down. Agent Orange, is that you? 
looks like our wingman's just spinning around up here. Not really up to much. That felt good. That felt really good. Alright, where are these? Oh, they're up high. Alright. Can we actually start locking onto these things? Have we got to hit them before they hit the ground? Maybe. Let's go for a loop. Punch it. Okay. Containers. Let's see if we can waste them. One after another. Well, not quite. Not quite. Doesn't appear that we can actually lock onto these, but I guess they don't have any kind of heat signature or anything like that. But you wouldn't have thought we'd be using just standard IR missiles this far into the future. You'd have thought they'd be radar guided or maybe optically guided or something. Or maybe I'm just nerding out too much. It'd be nice to get some uh, energy weapons on some of these craft as well. I'd be well down for that. Alright. Let's pepper this thing with some heavy shells. Alright. Okay, so I'm guessing we passed our training. Oh, we got a B rating. All right, maybe because we kicked them in the balls. I don't know. All right, anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna leave this here. This uh, tries Ace Combat Three. I had a good time. Uh, this man. I guess you just can't go wrong with Ace Combat. At least not the original tr uh, trilogy. Uh, in time, I can't see it happening this year. But um, I'm going to make a note. We're going to try and have a look at Ace Combat 3, the Japanese translated version. Uh, if I can find out where all the information and files and all that good stuff for that is. Uh, I know you have to download a load of files and then patch the Japanese version or something. There's a... Yeah, I did see a video on it the other day. It doesn't look too difficult, but getting everything and having some time to sit down and set it all up could be the other issue. So I'm going to record like a whole load of tries today because um, uh, I have a little bit of recording time. We're quite ahead of the normal videos. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought. And as always, till next time.